that's a brand new song that we just learned five minutes ago. <laughs> yes, it's called We Love the Lord. Hey, Facebook Live. Listen, I got news for y'all. I felt the Spirit of the Lord all day, and I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord, and I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord with y'all. And I woke up this morning with my mind on the Lord, and me and I just had a great day all day. Blessed be His holy name. And I was hoping that the place was packed. Because I thought all day that somebody's going to come and lay their burdens down at the feet of Jesus Christ. That's why we do this, you know what I mean? And, and I was reading Nehemiah. I woke up thinking I was going to go in Nehemiah, and I woke up thinking that God's the God of the turnaround, sis. Yes, he is. Blessed be his holy name. He's the God of the turnaround. Is he not? Yes, he is. You know, the, 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 the and, and I didn't even get in it, but you know, the, the, the demon possessed. How many times have we looked at somebody cracked out or nodding out or whatever, and we treat them like no doubt they did that demon possessed guy back in the day? You know what I mean? They look at him like, man, look at him. Don't get around him. He's got something you don't want nothing to do with. He's a low life. Look at him living homeless in that cave, and he's all clothed in sin, right? Because the, the, the devil will clothe you in sin, I promise you. And he will take you farther in sin than you want to go. He'll paint you a beautiful picture and then he'll clothe you in this bondage of sin. But Jesus Christ is the God of the turnaround. He don't turn his back. He walks up to that cave and brings that guy outside and, and separates him from the possession and sets him free, sis. And then work, wonder what that, the rest of that man's life is. He went and spread the gospel, amen. I believe with all my heart that he couldn't shut up about it. I believe he went in the town and said, man, I've met the God of the turnaround, sis. I believe it with all my heart. And I got to thinking about what is our stories. Zach, listen, Zach, we thought he was going to die. And I'm telling you, Seth Klein, if I remember right, and Nick Lawrence, and there was a few that just wouldn't accept it. They called on the Lord when it looked like dire straits. And guess what? The God of the turnaround showed up. Jesus Christ showed up. Pat, I don't know what you've been through, but I'm sure the God of the turnaround has taken place and a part in your life. Danny, when he was drinking 30 beers a day and his son wouldn't come out of the bedroom and his wife didn't want nothing to do with him and the God of the turnaround didn't pass him by. Jesus Christ looked on him. Danny told me, man, I can't get what you got. And blessed be the name of Almighty God. See, the Lord don't want any of us to perish. He's the God of the turnaround. Back in the day when they... When they stoked up that fire because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wouldn't bow. They wouldn't bow down to that, to that idol God. They wouldn't do what they were supposed to do. They said, if not, O king, we still won't bow. And they throw them three in the fire and they look and they see four. Amen. And that's the God of the turnaround. And listen, I... I uh, we, we this crowd, we, our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but somebody out there on Facebook tonight needs the God of the turnaround. And if you get to this building, we'll introduce you to him. And if not, you can meet him right where you are. But <laughs> we build this wall, and we need to build this wall with one hand to the building yeah. and one hand with the sword, sis, because I'm telling you, the enemy... I was reading in Nehemiah how those three, they kept just talking junk all the time. You'll always have naysayers. You'll always have people that don't want you to succeed. They don't want to take a part in it. They just don't want you to be successful in it. And all they're ever going to do is throw rocks. But Nehemiah and that group got their mind on what they came to do. And they said, man, you stand over us with a trumpet and you stand over us with a spear and half of us is going to go to the work and we're going to hold a sword in this other hand. Listen, I'm telling you, to make a radical change in this playhouse of the devil, we have to wage war against the devil and he's an unworthy adversary. Isaiah says one of these days we're going to look back on him and we're going to say, I can't believe that this... We're going to look narrowly, and I think we're going to cock our head and look and say, man, I can't believe we allowed this to cause us so much trouble. But I want you to know something. When you made it a point to be here tonight, actually when you made it a point to get up and just serve God, 
When you made it a point to roll out of bed and choose God instead of sin, when you made it a point to roll out of bed and have a conversation with Almighty God, you blacked the devil's eye before you ever got out of bed because it's an absolute choice that you make. Choose you this day whom you'll serve. And the God of the turnaround will do the rest. But listen, it's been a... I felt the presence of Almighty God all day. Blessed be His holy name. I serve the God of the turnaround. I serve the God that don't care if you're a drug addict and can't eat a cheeseburger without nodding out, you know? And, and what about the lady at the well where, where they're like, can you imagine this is the way the church would say it today? Look at her. She's a little bit... Oh, man, she's, she's promiscuous. She's got a lot of things going on. Let's don't go around her. A lot of people would have nothing to do with her, but Jesus Christ, Come the on. God of the turnaround, went out of his way to go to that well. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He went out of his way for me. Blessed be the name yes, of Almighty is. God. He went out of his way for you. And whatever it is that you're facing in this life, when Jesus put it on that tree, he went out of his way for it. And he's the God of the turnaround. And too many times we look at our circumstances. Man, get your eyes off the circumstances and put your eyes on the turnaround, blessed be his name, and lift him up and tell people about him and beat that drum. Time is running out. Whether the rapture comes tonight or whether this body stops ticking tonight, I don't know, but my time, my clock, is running thin. Your clock, sis, is running to an end, I promise you. But what has Jesus done for us? He paid it all for us. And we need to be about the Father's business. And we are joint heirs to the throne. We are royalty. We need to know our place. And then we won't be defeated by this puny adversary, the devil. The devil is absolutely nothing. Absolutely an unworthy nothing. Absolutely is not welcome in my home. He's not welcome in my automobile. He's not welcome in these four walls of this tabernacle. He's not welcome in this in this bottom right here. This is dedicated to the Lord God Almighty, the God of the turnaround. And I went the other day and I started anointing every door in my house and I was just praising the Lord and saying, devil, you ain't welcome here. And I don't mean for a minute turn on the TV and it's it's something I was dying to see, man, and I didn't get two minutes in it and filth. And you know what? If you want to live holy, it don't even have to be filth. It's just trying to quench this and I'm done. So it didn't get to filth, but I wanted to see a movie and I'm like, man, I really want to see this so bad. And I, I, I was there and I was about two minutes in it and I thought, Holy Spirit, why? Why would I invite you into this house and make you uncomfortable with this right here? And there was nothing to it. But I turned it off, sis, because you got to choose. Choose. God's holy if we want to press in and be holy. If we want to see our area healed, blessed be the name of the Lord. If we want to see these addicts come out of the caves and the God of the turnaround move on their behalf. If we want to see the blind see, if we want to see these things then we have to press in and we have to choose. And God's a jealous God. So if you're trying to walk this gray area, guess what? That's the wrong choice. Get all in with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Then you'll see a difference. We suffer the consequences of our actions. Everybody wants to blame it on God, but God oh. gives us the most powerful Amen. verb in the dictionary is to choose. And those choices add up. However you make them, however so small they seem, they add up. And that gives you an end result. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then we wonder where God is when we've, when we've allowed the devil in. The devil ain't welcome. He ain't welcome here in this building. He ain't welcome in the hearts of the people that congregate in this building. I don't want him to think that he is allowed an inch in here. And, and whether there's a hundred or ten, come in this place ready to worship the Lord and ready to lock that outside. Come into this house of refuge just for a minute. Let's get our mind on Jesus Christ. I have worshiped the Lord all day. And, and, it's, and it's, I don't say that to say this. I'm just saying I felt the Spirit of the Lord far before I got here. 
When I rolled out of bed this morning and I was thinking about Nehemiah and then I was thinking about the God of the turnaround and I had so many thoughts on my mind. And man, I, I truly woke up this morning going, somebody's going to lay to the feet of Jesus Christ and I just know that they are and I want them to do so bad because that's why I do this, to pluck somebody's soul from me. I'm not to come down here and make cool music. I want to separate people from the devil. I want to set the captives free. I want people to meet the God of the turnaround. I want promiscuous ladies that do, nobody will have anything to do with. I know a man that will go out of his way and speak to them and set them free and forgive them from the worst sin they ever done. Yes, and we need to be telling people that. Mm -hmm. People need to know, man. Listen, form and the fashion have emptied the churches. Jesus ain't about this religion. He's about a relationship. And I ain't trying to be me. But the reason the lost won't come in is because they've seen too much of the same old thing. And they've seen too much of me. I'll just watch five more minutes. Make a compromise with the devil and allow him and him to come in. And I can't have the authority that the Lord wants me to have if I'm going to share a place with the devil. Neither can you. Choose you this day. Does everybody agree with that? It's a choice that we make. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Listen. This is a great place to be. Yes. And, and it's an honor to serve him. Amen. And it's an honor. You know, Peter and John, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, arise and walk. Now, if those two would have made a compromise a few days before, would they have had that authority? I say, no way. Listen, they were sold out. Jesus rose. He came and talked to him. He come and fed Peter fish. Simon Peter, lovest thou me? Yes, Lord, feed my sheep. Simon Peter, lovest thou me? Yes, Lord, feed my lambs. Simon Peter, lovest thou me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. And Jesus done that for the three times that Peter denied him. And Jesus Christ will do the same for you. And the same for you. And no matter how many times we fail him, He'll go out of his way just to love us back. And that's what makes him God. And that's what makes him beautiful. And that's what makes this conversation worth taking place. Yes. If God didn't love me this much, I'd stay at the house back. If Jesus Christ didn't love me so much, why would, why would, we, why would any of this be worth anything? If we have to add to anything, like Paul says, if I have to add to the gospel, it's become as a... A symbol that's making noise. It's nothing. It amounts to nothing. And he wouldn't add to the gospel because the gospel doesn't need to be added to this. Yeah, yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ Amen. paid the only price that it will ever take. And he will set us free right now and forgive us. And once we know that, we're supposed to beat that drum and bring others in. Right. Oh, hey. It's just... Uh, I even had some folks who said they were going to be here. Man, I wanted to be so bad. But listen, tonight, we can play some music. got to be great. But I think if everybody would like to participate, that we need, see, because David, right? People seen a shepherd and not seen a king. And I was telling you this on the way down. Who has God called you to be like? Who has God called you to be? Who has God called you to be, Dan? It ain't just, you know, what has he placed inside of you? What is the hunger that he's put inside of you? What is the gifting that he's given us? You see what I'm saying? Sis? Who has he called us to be? When he, when he built it, what has he gifted in you? I would love for this body to let's have a real conversation about when Jesus saved me, I was this way, and now I'm that way, and he's gave me a heart for this. Can we do that? Would everybody, would most of us at least participate in that? Let's do that. And so then we'll know how to encourage each other. And we'll know what each other stands in need of. Can we do that tonight? Is that cool with everybody? Give a testimony. Is that good? Let's go to prayer, can we? God, we praise you and declare you to all of And Lord, we ask that you bless each and every one that's in here, God. That you use us for your glory, Lord. I pray, God, that you must have happened to be here tonight. Lord, we ask that you bless the revival over at OCA, God. I 
I pray, God, that you're successful, Lord, for all this harvest is one. But, God, I thank you for those that have came in here tonight. And, Lord Jesus, I'm glad that you was here with the door. Oh, blessed be your name. God, that you're the God of the turnaround, God, that you don't see us in our failure, God. You don't see us in the sin that we're clothed in. God, you see us the way you want us to be. Lord, you see us as the child that you want us to become. Lord, I ask that you bless the service of Jesus. May we pray. Thank you. Lay your blessings up for us. Amen. Oh. Anyway, that was on my mind. Danny, you want to say? Thank you, Oh, you want to do that harmonica song? I mean, if y'all want to, get the mic. Yeah, well, go put your harmonica in the mic. He's been playing harmonica for five days. For seven days. I want to play something so bad in this band, I can sing. <laughs> I can't remember. You have to remind me. Dan, tell me what that was, brother. Y'all uh, changed it in the uh, oh, uh, you okay, We can't play the second fret. G is a video yeah. Yeah. Uh, first fret. You, you, you second fret. You have to tell them. Oh, okay. Know, we'll right. So it's How's it going? Oh, 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 oh. I don't I don't I don't I got five. Help me, Phil. That's it. That's all I can get. I ain't got to get to it. Like, see? Show me real quick. If we do the same shapes.
Just another tool, black and That's all it's about. Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord worshiping with y'all guys. Bless. Let's black his eye. Black his eye? Yeah. Let's do. I just played with it to her red. Come on, sickness. Come on, my 
I'd like to say God's been so good to me here lately, man. I, like I said, I started this new job. It's such a blessing. I don't have to, you know, I just don't have to be around all the stuff and all the stuff that, you know, you get caught up in worldly things, man. And I'm going to tell you, it's really easy. It's, it's so easy to get caught up in it. I mean, you know, we're of the world and the flesh and everything. What does it say? Oh, there's uh, only a season. It seems only fun for a season. I'm going to tell you, man, I don't know. It's just when you've been sinning your whole life, you know, it's so it's so easy to get caught up in when you're around. And if you get away from it, it's, man, I'm telling you, God's on your mind. You can just, you know, I talk to God more. I run a machine every day. It's a milling machine. And I... I pray, pray. I'm a milling machine. Listen, I know it sounds crazy, but I pray demons out of because I know you so won't get messed up. But I just, I just want to thank God for uh, everything He's done for me. Because, like I said, y'all know my story. I was an alcoholic. Dad come around, and something happened to me. That literally, it's just the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And it's been two years. And listen, man, it's a hard life, but it's worth it. Well, amen. It's it is it's it's just so worth living the life of the Lord. It's just it's just such a better life for me and my family. I just want to say I love and thank you for everything he's done for me and my family. And what he's doing for y'all, y'all's family, what he's doing for everybody. What are we doing now? Oh, 
This is, this is very difficult. It is. Nice. I'll stay at. Yeah, it is. But can you get to Sad. I'll get that. I didn't get that off. I'll get that off. Yeah. 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 Y'all pray for me. Here, take this. This is very much. Y'all pray for me. I don't know if I've ever seen this on the church.
I'm going to read just a word out of Isaiah, and then I would like for anybody that wants to participate, we'll just give a testimony like I say, but Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 says, But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Come on, brother. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I have called you by name, and that's what I was saying earlier. Too many times the world sees just that old ruddy ship and it ain't worth nothing. They ain't even God sees a king. Too many times people see that throwaway that's nodding out, but God oh. sees somebody that he can redeem. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Too many times people see that old wine on that drunk that's just used up and they just want to make fun, and God ain't that way. He loves us no matter what we've ever done. And he has called us by name. And he has called us to a purpose higher than ourselves. If we'll get all in and seek him and ask him what he wants us to do, what he's given us to do. And I'm telling you, this 
things is going to happen here at, at, at this house of refuge. We're going to wage war on the devil, and things are going to happen. The people's going to throw stones and lead them because we're going to just band together this group of brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're going to spread the word and the hope of the Lord. Without Jesus Christ, there is no hope. Without the love of the Lord, we're men most miserable. I've been without the Lord, and I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to look around and just think, man, these four panel walls are going to consume me. When you're just so lonely that you don't even know how to write them into words, when you think Hank Senior had it right, and you just look around and all it looks just like a wasteland, man, and you feel so worthless. And then just think that Jesus Christ has a purpose greater for us, that he's called us by name, that he gave us something inside of us that makes us uniquely who we are. He, he, he never planted the same flower that looks the same way. He's given each one of us some kind of gift, and that's to help somebody else. But he calls us by name. And Danny, I'm going to put you on the spot. Go ahead and give it. When Jesus Christ called you by name, can you give us that testimony? Will you give us that testimony? Yeah, I'll do it short. Buddy. Amen. Do it. Because here, here's the thing. You overcome the devil by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and the word of our testimony. And listen, we're going to black his eye. We're going to black his eye when we wake up in the morning. When I wake up in the morning and I choose Jesus Christ, I black the devil's eye. And every one of us does that because it's an absolute choice. The devil thinks he's crafty. He, he, he talked angels out of heaven. And so he thinks he's going to deceive us and torment us and make us be something that we're not. And he's going to lose ground right here in this bottle. He's going to lose ground right here in this holler. And there's going to be youth that comes to know Jesus Christ right here through our God Camp Youth Program. There's going to be soul saved right here because we're going to put Jesus Christ first. And we're going to put the devil out. And that's the plan. The plan ain't any more elaborate than that. Jesus Christ here, the devil here under our feet. And that's all the Lord expects us to do. But give your testimony. And, and, and not everybody has to, but if you will, we'll just give you testimony. We'll, we'll go to the back. Okay. I've been with the Lord for a long time, but the Lord got to give me more. The Bible speaks very well sometimes. I say it all the time. I'm 46 years old. Uh, or at least 20, 25. 26 years of that, I I love to drink and I like I, the word I like to party. I was that guy. I was uh, I chased motorcycles. I had going the uh, I worked. I was a good I was a good worker. Always a good worker. But you know I, I was a functional alcoholic and uh, nobody's going to get me to quit drinking. And, you know, uh, like I say, 25 years of my life it was uh, a lot of it was liquor and beer. And when people people don't realize this is all well. Pat said you drink 30 beers a day. No, that was 30 beers in like three hours. It wasn't like all day. Like you see some of these drunks, I'm not forgiving, some of these people that drink. It was like that. I wouldn't drink while I was at work. When I get off work, I'd go to the convenience store just to buy a six pack of tall boys before I get 10 minutes to my house where there's another 30 pack of beer. And I wouldn't drink that all day, like most people, you know, that, that has a drinking problem. I was doing that in three hours. You know, so, and uh, every night I literally pass out drunk after I've done fall with my family and fall with my kids. And, and, you know, a lot of people don't know this, you know. they seen a happy dandy. I was always the goofy, happy guy. I was always the guy that literally tried to make everybody else happy and everybody else laugh. Well, I was dying inside. And uh, I was raised in church. Uh, when I got older, I quit going. I got away from church. But, you know, I... <clears throat> I don't want to get off too far from the story, but uh, you know, I got to the point where uh, my wife made me really angry during this few years ago. And uh, I, I, I got to the point where I literally, I hated her. And uh, I tried to make her memorable because uh, I had a dream in Florida and we moved back here. And uh, I tried to make my wife miserable because, uh, I, I, you know, I could have left, but it was just, you know, I, We've been together so long, and I made her so miserable that I turned her to drink. And uh, so 
she, we come back to Florida, from Florida, and I said, nobody's going to hire me. There's no work. There's no jobs. And I got a phone call from a friend to go to a place called Mining Controls. I worked with Adam there for, you know, I've known Adam a few years to be working his way back. Well, three times in our life. So I used to go to work drunk every morning. I started smoking weed, and I'd start getting hammered. And I'd get hammered before I went to, to work. And uh, I'd smoke uh, weed in the morning before. And I know they know that I was drinking because they had to hold a, a temperature gauge to my forehead every morning. And, you know, they never said anything because, you know, I was a functional alcoholic. I could do my job, but I was so mouthy. I was so filthy mouth. I was so nasty. I was just vulgar. I was mean, you know. And a lot of people think it's fun. You know, it's fun when you're, when you're not, when you're not the, I don't say the rear end of the joke, you know. So, but uh, that come around, started coming around during all this about two years ago. Look, it's been a little over two years ago. And it just, times fly, flew by. But a couple of years ago, Tad started coming by. And uh, Tad, you know, Tad never uh, pushed God or Jesus down your throat. He never, uh, he never preached it, screamed it at you, or fire and damnation and brimstone and you're going to hell. He preached it that God loves you, you know, and that, and uh, he told me how it was, and I just kept thinking, I, yeah, yeah, and uh, I still drink, and uh, I still kept drinking, and uh, I, I just don't want to, this story, it's just such a long story, I mean, time went by, I take it, just come, Ted didn't gave up on me, yeah, he just kept coming, and you know, I think he was coming around, he says I was, but I think he was just coming around purposely just to try to help me, try to talk to me about God. I didn't know. I didn't I just thought you went to church, you went to hell. And I don't want to offend anybody by this one I'm about to say. But what happened to me, it's a feeling. People don't people don't understand. I try to explain this to them. If you've got God in your life, and it's it's a difference between but having God in your life and no talking, just knowing there's a God. There's a, there's a difference. There's, it's a feeling. What happened to me, it's the Holy Spirit. I didn't know that's what it was the night I got saved. I didn't know what all this happened was the night I got saved. But this wonderful feeling, and it's a feeling. It's, a, uh, it's like it's something snapped. It's like you have to go to a mental ward to explain it because people think you're crazy. The joy, the peace. The, the talk of the God, the talk of the, you're thinking, please don't take us the wrong way. People, it's like, oh, you, you're talking to an imaginary, you know, imaginary friend or imaginary person, you know. And it's what you feel like when you when you don't have God in your life. When you're just walking through the motions and you're going to church and you're just going to church. And I just hope I'm not offending people. It's a feeling. It's a, it's, it's a little, you can feel it. There's tingling, there's goosebumps, it's excitement. It's like, it's a high when you talk about God, it's, it's a high, like drinking 30 beers. It's like a high I can't explain to you when I talk about God, when I try to explain it to other people, you know, and it's so hard to explain it to other people because people don't want to listen. I was that guy. I didn't want to listen. I had people try to talk to me about God for 20 some years, and I didn't listen. I was running. I was always, I didn't know. So I get back to this story. I, don't, I just ramble. I know. It's just, I want to explain things to people. Because they don't, I, I just want them to understand if if I if it happens to me, it can happen to you, and if 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 you can get this Holy Ghost like I got, it, maybe something I say will help you get, you know, this this wanting to serve God, want to do this, want to help people, want to preach to somebody. It's our job once you get God in your life to literally tell somebody else about Jesus. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry, Brandon. Pat started coming around. Talking about God, and uh, you know, God started working on me, started drawing on me, and uh, I quit drinking for about a few days, and I'd start up again. I quit drinking for another week, and I'd start up again. And Pat kept asking me to bring a guitar. Someday, I guess my wife posted something that he didn't know that I didn't even sing. I never, I just sung when I was drinking or in a bathroom or by myself or somewhere. I kept trying to get me to come soon. I just didn't want to be part of it. I was always, if you seen me, I was lit. I mean, I was, if you seen me, even with my children in the car, 
Listen to me. I'm not, I'm not proud of the things I did. I drive around. I was hammered all the time with my kids in the car. I had my kids in the car. And listen, it wasn't nothing for me to just be drinking a 30 pack of beer, just, you know, with my children in the car, my wife. You know, and it's just, you know, that don't sound good, man. And uh, I'm really ashamed of that, you know, now that I'm older. But God's forgave me of it. But, you know, I had a real problem with it. People don't you can say what they want to. I had a real problem with alcohol. And uh, got so bad that my, my liver, my liver was, uh, they tell me my liver was uh, going bad. So, you know, but I still didn't care. I kept on, kept on. But, uh, I had to come around and, uh, we sang a song, and I was drunk at night in his living room, and I never drank in Pat's house. I was always respectful of Christian people. I tried to, I always say I keep it rated R, you know, around Christian people, you know, because there's some filthy, you know, stainless steel language. But I kept it, you know, tried to keep it PG-13, PG, you know. They uh, recorded me singing a song, and I was happy. And uh, I put it on Facebook, and I got mad when I got home at night. Jenny, my wife said, did you see what Pat put on Facebook? I was like, no, and I listened to it. I was really ashamed of it. I was embarrassed of it because I hated the way I sung, you know. I called Pat. <laughs> and I told Pat, I said, would you please take this off? I said, I don't want people to hear that. And I'll never forget, he said, you got no time. Pat said, listen, sucker. He said, I'm not taking that off of there. He said, that was beautiful, man. He said, somebody needs to hear that. Somebody needs to hear that, man. He said, that was really good. He said, somebody, you can lift somebody up. You can make somebody stand. And I told Tad, I said, you're crazy. I said, nobody wants to hear me. Nobody wants to hear us. I said, Tad, I said, you just, you basically fight the losing battle, buddy. He said, no, you ain't. No, we ain't. Blah, blah, blah. I got mad and I hung up. And he didn't take it off there. He kept it on there a few days. And I know it's a long guy, but I apologize. But uh, I started going to work. And uh, I still going to work. It's drunk. And uh, I remember <clears throat> these people started coming up to me. And I didn't know what Facebook was. I never did Facebook. And uh, I had people come up to me and say, Danny, is this you? I was embarrassed. And I'd say, man, I said, it's pretty bad, ain't it? They said, no, Danny. That's really good. That's really good. I said, then, well, I said, then I'm, I'm just ashamed. He said, did you see how many people seen it? And I said, well, I don't know what that means. I didn't know what that meant. And it was like 500 people in a few days. I didn't know what that meant. I said, is that good? He said, that's really good. You know, he said, you know, and I said, well, that's never thought nothing of. The next day, this woman come out, was crying. She, I guess she heard me sing a song. I just didn't know what, what the fuss was about. And this girl woman had tears in her eyes. I thought she was hurt. And she was crying, complimenting me on the way I sang. She told me to keep doing it. And it was beautiful. And you know, then the next day, this other guy come out. I didn't even know who he was. The old man wearing a mask. This is the guy that come and he stuck a $100 bill in my beers. And uh, he came out. He, was, he had tears in his eyes. We sang The Thief. It was no, that was the other time. We sung the song of the thief because I started going back to Pat. It made me feel like I was worth something. So I started going back singing the song of Pat. And uh, so this guy come out, he stuck a hundred dollar bill in my bed. And was, he had tears in his eyes saying, Man, that's beautiful. He said, Y'all keep doing what you're doing. And I pulled that bit, the hundred dollar bill out. And I'm thinking, Man, I'm going to the stack machine. I mean, that sounds like a joke, but I didn't know no better. I was like, So I called Pat told Tad this guy, and he said, this is for your ministry. And here's a drunk. But, uh, no idea. I don't know what, dude. I'm not part of a ministry. I said, dude, and I called Tad. Tad said, that's awesome. Bring that money to me. Because I know what we can use it for. <laughs> so here's, here's going to get to this story. All this stuff, this stuff went around. This stuff going around. All this circle back to me just drinking and going to Tad's. And Tad just encouraging me. And these people encouraging me. Make me feel like I was worth something. Because listen, man, the devil gets you in your head, man. He makes you feel like you ain't worthy. Yeah, you're worthless. And listen, I, I was at the point I wanted to kill myself. I, that's the truth. And I think I tried a few times on a Harley. I really do believe that. So Christmas Eve night, I'm probably skipping a bunch. I'm just, I'm just being rambling. I'm sorry. I got so much I can tell y'all. 
Well, Christmas Eve night, 2020, worst year of my life, become the greatest night of my life. We went on Christmas break. We went on Christmas break. And I'm just going to tell it all. I, I wasn't drinking that night. It was a beautiful night. I remember it, it, I was in shorts and a t-shirt. It was uh, it was before the uh, big snow hit that morning. And I went and I bought a bag of marijuana off of a buddy of mine for a Christmas gift. And uh, I remember coming home, parking the car in my, in my driveway, and the stars were set. And I remember, and I've told this story so many times, and I get it wrong, that this is exactly how it happened. I, I get tongue tied. But I was leaning on a fence, and I looked up at the stars, and I had a ball cap on, and I said, God, I said, Lord, God, use me for something. I said, God, my wife hates me, my kids hate me. I said, God, I want to die. I said, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I said, you know, I believe in you, God. I think I know you're real. And I'm telling you, it wasn't an audible voice. It was something in me that wasn't me that says, how disrespectful. Get on your knees. And I'm telling you, it kept over my head. I'm like, whoa, whoa, this ain't me. I know this ain't me. So I got on my knees and started praying the same prayer. God, Lord, use me. I said, I don't know. My wife hates me. My kids hate me. Lord, I, I just want to die. I just don't. And I didn't feel nothing like any other time I've ever prayed. I've never felt nothing when I prayed until that night. I remember I was going to get up. Pat told me his testimony, which he told y'all in here, if y'all remember. He said he went up on a rock. He went to a place where no, he thought, nobody ever going to go. And I'm going to go back there. And if I go and feel God before I left. And he said, I prayed on my face. That's what he said. He said, I prayed on my face. And I said, God, and I said, I'm going to try that. He said, I'm going to try that, God. And I'm telling you, man, when I laid my face on the ground, I remember, I mean, I'm telling you, I got tattoo up. I got tattoos all over me, and they're, they're godly now. They're not something that's, it's, it's 20, and it's Christmas Eve night. I laid my face on the ground, and I didn't pray anymore. I started crying, and I started apologizing. I started apologizing for being so bad to my, my kids and my wife, for being so bitter against my parents, for just being just mean, just always just being mean and just treating people bad and doing this and doing that. And I bet I did that, just cried. I cried and apologized. And I didn't know that was repentant. I didn't know it's what that was. I didn't know. And all of a sudden, guys, this happened. And I, I say it, but I don't be disrespectful. I don't care if you believe me or not. Because it happened. I'm not crazy. It ain't something that I need to go be locked up for. It ain't just like a, a chemical imbalance. This wonderful, it was a sensation hit me. And it was the, the tingling sensation, goosebumps. And I feel it when I talk about it. When I talk about God, it runs through me. It's, it's just like an adrenaline rush that don't go away. And chill bumps and goosebumps. And then I felt that first, like electricity. And all of a sudden, man, my, it was just like a love. It was like a, like a peace. Like, a, you know, I, I use it as the Grinch that stole Christmas, and my heart grew three sizes that day. Mine grew more than that. Mine, it was just like an instant, overwhelming love hit me like you wouldn't believe. And then here's the best part. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this, my hand to, to I, I, I don't know how to say it without being blasphemous or have. It felt like this building was lifted off of me. It felt like all the weights, everything, like a vehicle, like I had all these burdens and all these woes and all this <clears throat> anguish. It was like it was instantly lifted off of me. And I remember I could, after that happened, I knew it was God. I didn't sit there and think, is this my imagination? Is this, is this me? I jumped, up, I jumped up and I started screaming. It was like 12 o'clock, I was 11 o'clock at night, I can't remember. And uh, started screaming, thank you, Jesus, thank you, God, thank you so much. And then for three days, I'll never forget, for three days, I just wanted to keep, yeah, I was just wanted to tell people. I was, I was just like, whew, whew. Oh, for three days, I was so excited. I mean, it, it was a different, it was a change. It was a total change from what I was to what I used to be. It was instant. I mean, it was, it was instant. I mean, this is the thing, man. It's real. God, 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 God,
I just, I just, I know, I take it for granted. I got this feeling that I know God's real. And this just much, this way I've done now. When you get God in your life, you know that he's real. It's like you still go on doing the stupid junk you do. Because you get caught up in life, Chuck. You get caught up in this. You get caught up in that. You get caught up in a TV show. And the whole thing is, is God is so real. But you take, we take, I take it for granted still. This wonderful feeling. And as Pat said, he puts this bubble over you when you first get saved. And it was the greatest feeling. And you know, sometimes, you know, you want to keep that feeling. And the only way to do that is to read your Bible or worship or come. And you come at that first time that I got saved. I go lie. I had that feeling back for a long time. You know, I know it's my fault because I don't read my Bible enough. I don't do things I'm supposed to do, but I love God. He's on my fine day and night. I think about him when I get up in the morning. I think about him when I go to bed at night. And like I said, man, I just, I just, I just, he changed me from something that I used to be. And I went to Florida a couple of weeks ago. And it's the first time I've ever been in Florida sober. It's the first time I've ever been sober in Florida. And it was such a, I mean, me and my buddy, my son, we still argued a little. And it was so good. It was so good, man. I mean, I, I, I just, you know, it's so much better being a sober person and living for God to be able to see the beauty in things, man. The ocean waves, the wind blow, trees, the wind, you know. And I just, you know, I, I'm sorry I took so much time with this stuff. But my testimony is that. I mean, it really happened. I, and, and my buddy Adam here, he said, and I, I got to say this, me and Adam talked one time. We was talking about religion, talking about God. It's before I was saved. I didn't know nothing about his, his religion or if he even believed in God. When everybody was talking about God, and I said, listen, I said, when you die, you're worm food. I said, I believe that. I said, I believe you're worm food. I said, hey, when you die, we that's it. I mean, really? Man, I said, I don't believe that. I think there's something else. After you die, I truly believe that. And uh, I just said, you know, the Bible's full of good stories. I mean, you know, I would just, you know, I, I always, and you know, I, I was wrong. I was wrong. And I'm so thankful, I'm so glad that, uh, that I didn't die and go to hell. I'm so glad that I am still living and breathing and I accepted Jesus Christ because you don't get a second chance, guys. If you die, Tonight, if you leave this place tonight and you die and you didn't accept God or even try to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you, I mean, you're being told in the Bible, you're going to hell. You're going, that's where you're going. Hell's real. Hell's real. So I'm just so thankful and I'm sorry I took so much time. And it's a short version, you know. So. <laughs> a lot short. That is a short version. No. Listen, we went to his cousin's church. Two hours. And it was, it was, he took us back to childhood. Yeah. I, I, I told him to shorten that up, but he took us way back. He's like, and then I was in a diaper, and I got so mad. <laughs> and, I like, <laughs> and I wanted to slap him back. You know, I mean, it was, uh, he took us way back. But somebody else, and really, and you don't have to give it. But if you want to give your testimony or tell tell what the God's called you to do, please let's take the time to do that. Landon, would you go for it? Brother Ted, I, I used to try to share my testimony. A lot of people probably already heard. I went through a lot in my childhood. I lived, a, I lived an okay life, I guess you could say. I was part of my childhood raised in church. I thought I knew what God really was, but I was too dumb to accept him in my teenage years. I always went to youth group, but I always got into mangles, you know, as soon as I left. I always done the things that I shouldn't have done, but I always did. But you know what? I thank God for his brother through. At the age of 17, I moved out of my mom and dad's house and I'm like that. I wasn't no 26-year veteran in an alcohol. But you know, there about a year there, I went through a lot. Uh, I, I lived by myself, didn't have nothing to live for, didn't care if I seen the morning. And I can remember standing one night at Doctor's Corner, sick, throwing up outside of my truck. 
I didn't think I was going to die. I thought I was going to die. And I said, Lord, you should be done. But, and I'm going to be fair if you give me a good woman. And in January, I met Candace. I was 18 years old. And like I said, I've been in my mom. I was sitting in the road with my mom. I had an everyday job. I was like, Kim, I was a good worker. Work six days a week, 12 hours a day. But the other 12 hours, I was late drunk or passed out, and I didn't have nothing to live for. It, I, I, st- I was trying to feel an emptiness that was inside of me. I had nothing. There was nothing there that could feel it. It didn't matter. I never done fortunes. I never snorted tails or shot up. I never done things like that. But but my answer was that. Yeah. And. You know, I didn't have an idea of where he was going to take me or where I was going to. But I did know that if he would send me a good woman, that it would help me. He sent me her. She was already in church. We dated two months, fell in love. I mean, for eating love. People had bets on us. We'd never make it. Two and a half months, we got married. We got, we lived together. We took our first year of emergency through two miscarriages. <laughs> Fought a lot of hard fights our first year of marriage. Bought our house. My pay got cut over half. Didn't know how we was going to eat. If it wasn't for any of the other times that we went there. But you know what? Thanks be to God on August 9th of that year. He called me. I was standing on the porch of Joey Massey's house. Yes, Lord. And, and, and there was a woman who said, when you going to get saved? I said, oh, he didn't call me. And I would go to church every weekend. I'd go. I was faithful. It was a real. <laughs> you don't have a story, but you're going to go with me. <laughs> and, and I go, and I'd sit there for the conviction of God, didn't care. I didn't care if I walked out. And I, t- I, I, I stuck my foot in my mouth. Stay fair was going on. It's a Saturday night. I'll never forget. Saturday night, August 9th of 2008. We'd stand on that porch, and that woman asked me, so when are you going to give your life to God? I said, Ah, when he calls me. Something happened. We we were supposed to went the Sunday for night and we canceled. We, she said, well, let's go we'll go to church. Tommy White was preaching. And I can remember as I was sitting there, I was about the fourth, fifth row back, and me and her always sit in the same seat. I got pinned in between people to where I couldn't get out for one to. And he was preaching and the anointing of God was moving so strong. I was just waiting on quitting time for the church to get back outside. But he stopped right dead sitting. He, and he walked up the edge of the and he said, somebody here is waiting on the call. And God said, it's your time right now. And the prayer of God fell on me. And listen, I believe at that moment, I believe at that moment I was saved. And I'm going to tell you why. Because he knew. He knew he had me where he needed me. He knew he convicted my heart to where he needed to get me down to where he needed me to be. And I can remember as I stepped out, I walked up. I said, he said, you waiting on the call? I said, yeah. He said, you wait, God could save you. I said, absolutely. He said, lift your hands. And I looked at my hands. And the moment I looked at my hands, I could feel the prayer of God fall over me. I could feel the anointing just flow over me. And, and I, I don't even remember what he did. But this is the God of God. All these people falling out in the floor. That, 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 let me tell you something. God can break you down and he can make you to where you will lay down on the floor. He can make you to where you wish that he was he was there 24-7, 365. Because when I lifted my hand, that, that showed him I surrendered. I gave him everything I had. Yeah. But fast forward on through, when it come to, I was pulling up another the cube. <laughs> <laughs> I got up out there, and I can remember his plans. They was trying to pick up out the floor. I said, no, I got to pray. I got to pray. And we left there at night. We went we made pizza hut. Everybody, I mean, everybody poured the tears crying. And they said, it looks like we've been in the funeral. We had that. Yes. Amen. That night, my Amen. life was changed. Amen. And I didn't see, I didn't see where it was taking. I didn't know what it was going to use me for. But you know what? December 9th, 2015, he called me. I stepped out. I started preaching. Bless the I, and I'll be honest with you, I prayed for God to send Randy to ask me to preach. I, I was running from being called to preach. You know what? Randy walked right into my house, right in the middle of my kitchen. He said, you got a month. In a month, you preach your first message. And that's what I prayed for. Now, you tell me, if God can't tell you to do that, 
Listen, he hurt me as a drunkard. Amen. He hurt me, say, Lord, if you'll give me a good woman. Yeah. That's all it's going straight good. And you know what? It might not be most of y'all. This might not even be a big testimony to you, but you know what? It broke through for me. Amen. And I, I tell you what, if it's help, I don't ever want to look back. I don't ever want to turn my back on him. I want to raise my family to love and know him. I want to know without a shadow of a doubt that my name is inscribed in Lance Book of Life today. And I want to know without a shadow of a doubt that I've done everything I can do. I failed, and I, I probably failed again, but you know what? I speak blessings to me and mine. And I thank you for saving my soul. Thank you. Who's next? I ain't going to call on you. Anybody else go? I'm trying to taste the salvation. Go ahead. I want to get my chat. It's their car. Yeah. I'm probably the oldest one here, other than maybe Tally, but I look 10 years older than she is. Oh, please, no, turn the camera around. <laughs> but I don't have the testimony. I got saved when I was 17 years old. I was a high school. I was a senior in high school. And I thought, Lord, you can't call me to serve you because I can yeah. never do it. But, you know, I had good friends in school. They didn't drink, or if they did, they didn't drink around me. They didn't smoke. If they did, they didn't smoke around me. They didn't do drugs around me. And Mommy had three kids, and out of the three of us, I was the best one there was. Mother can vouch for that. Ted can vouch for that. The worst thing I ever did in my life, Candace, you know, I didn't drink alcohol. God didn't save me from that, Brother Danny. I didn't take pills. God didn't save me from that. I didn't smoke weed. I didn't do things. I wasn't a promiscuous person. I didn't go to clubs. I didn't sleep around. I didn't do any of that much. The worst thing I did, I guess, was I stole a lipstick from that belonged to my and Kathy. Mm -hmm. And I stole Barbie dolls and Ted and Mary used to make fun of me. But that was probably the worst sense that I ever did was I stole Barbie dolls of all things because I loved Barbie dolls more than anything in my life when I was growing up. I loved Barbie dolls. But you know what? Tad, there was some revival going on in the old church that sat over here. It was called Brewster Chapel. And the preachers back then used to preach on hell, that there's a hell that you need to stay away from. Jesus Christ died for us not to have to go to that place, Dad. And those preachers that were preaching at revival would preach on hell. And I'd been taking classes at school to go and pass a civil service test. And my typing skills, I was the A, the top one in my typing class. And I went the week of that revival to take my civil service test me and my best friend at that time. And all I could think of, Candace, while I was sitting there taking that test, was the preachers preaching about hell and how Jesus Christ had loved me enough to die for me that I wouldn't have to go to that place. And do you know God let me fail that civil service test in the part that I had down pat? <laughs> I could not get my mind to concentrate on what I was there for. That night, I went back to the revival. The preacher preached. They gave the altar call, and I think I was the first one to the altar, and I gave my life to Jesus Christ at the age of 17. Have I lived perfect? And I'll be 62 in about a week and a half. Have I lived perfect all those years? No, I have absolutely not, and I'd be the first to tell you. I have not. I've been a miserable failure at times. But it's been me that's failed, Brother Billy. It's not been God because he's always been there to keep me. There's been times, yes, that I've got down to where I wanted to give up. But that still small voice inside of me said, no. Amen. Keep on. Get back up. Amen. Dust yourself off. Keep going. And Brother Danny, I know you say this a lot. And I want to correct you in the spirit Amen. of love. The Bible says that the way of a transgressor is hard. 
serving Jesus Christ is not hard. And, and Brother Landon, and I know you can vouch for this, it's not hard as long as we stay under his shelter. But when we start slipping and we start getting away from that shelter, then our ways kind of start to get hard to have. I know. I've done that. But God didn't walk away from me. I have let him down. But he's always been there to nudge me and always been there to help me stir that up with inside of me because I don't want to die lost. I don't want my children to die lost. And what's got me stirred up here at last is I've seen my grandkids. I see some of my kids walking headlong into hell, Candace. I can't, if I could do this and reach out and grab them and stop them, I would. But I can't. All I can do is try to live a life before them. And it's a battle. And I'm trying to get my household back in order. But I've got a son that, yes, God brought him through a miraculous, miraculous. Healing. But he did totally heal his mind. And sometimes that wishes he had died that God would have let him die after that four wheeler accident. Because he wanted his greatest desire was to join the military, but he didn't. He came because of his traumatic brain injury. He wanted to join the police force, but I don't think they'll let him because of the traumatic brain injury. But sometimes he wishes that God would have let him die. But you know, I have to keep pulling at my kids and trying to tell them that, look, this is my house. Thank you, baby. I choose to serve God. And there's things that can't go on in my house. Like Tag said, you can't watch the movies with the bad by words mm -hmm. in it and expect God's spirit to dwell there. You can't watch the filth. I got criticized before because I wouldn't let my kids watch Wizards of Waverly Place when they were younger because they cast spells in a town mm -hmm. and they can make kids uh, cast a spell on them and make them do what they want them to. And I told my kids, the Spirit of God quickened my heart. And I said, absolutely, you won't watch this in my house. But I got made fun of from Christian people. But you know what? That's fine. If the Spirit of God tells you that it's wrong, it's wrong. You better listen. I don't care who you want to stand against. And my kids didn't like me for a long time because they, they left that show. <laughs> But I want y'all to pray for me. I love the Lord. I wouldn't trade anything for my journey. It's been a long, long journey. But I won't say it's been a hard journey. It's been a good journey, Brother Landon. And I know I have a long to go. That's I've got behind me. And I know I've got a better place to go to. I know I've got loved ones waiting there for me. But most of all, I've got my Jesus waiting there. And it's going to be a blessing tag when I get to see him face to face. I love the Lord tonight, and I love you all. Thank you for listening. Mr. Chris, I, I walked into Breyer's bedroom the other day. And uh, there was a there was a book there, a trapper keeper book, and I mean it cringed me. And I'll go ahead and sound like a crazy uh, person too, but right's right and home's wrong. Uh, I looked at that and I was I was literally cringed like that looks like a book of spells. Like what's this doing in my son's room? How did this even possibly get in here? And I go look at it, and it was Harry Potter stuff. And I mean, the symbolism on it and stuff just, I mean, it was like you threw cold water over me. I'm like, how in the world? And I was reading off, it says something about wizard or whatever. And I, and I literally went and woke up Jenny and I was like, hey, this can't happen here. This is not welcome here. I don't care if that lady made billions of dollars or whatever. But I mean, promoting sorcery and stuff, man, and we ain't gonna roll that way. We're gonna choose Jesus Christ and none of the rest. And I was like, this has got to go. 
And, and I, I got to think, can you probably every bedroom in America that's not hardcore serving the Lord's got Harry Potter in it, you know? And, and, I, and I'll sound like a crazy person, but I promise you, I choose God. Choose you this day, I choose God and, and everything he stands for. And and it's mild ways like that that the devil manipulates you. Oh, this is, man, this is Harry Potter. Everybody's not Harry Potter. Oh, they only cast good spells. I don't even know if that's a true statement. But I don't care, man. The Bible speaks against it. If the Bible speaks against it, then i got to be against it. I was like, that's got to go. And Jenny goes, uh, I got the same thing for Cameron. I'm like, it's got to go, man. I, you know, I don't understand that. But... Uh, Thank you, sis. You're right. I don't know about the wisdom of the Waverly Place, but I remember when Mom and Dad wouldn't let me dress up like a ghost or a goblin. And I thank God that they didn't. Don't give place to the devil. The Bible says resist evil. Resist. And it'll flee. Amen. So who else? Somebody else. Somebody else. I would say that that story. Uh, Jesus said that I went to church my whole life. Uh, I brought up the church. I accepted the Lord as a young teenager. And then, you know, after I got out of school, I was pretty much like judgment. I just, just ran the other way and God called me. Here about six years ago, I was out of state living in Mississippi. And it, I started going back to church with my mother in law. At the time, and the Lord, the Lord got a hold of me. Let me open my eyes and sin. I was letting you. And they quit running from me. And the first thing I did, I packed up and moved back to West Virginia. And ever since I've come back, the Lord has done nothing for white people in my place. I pray to God that I'm here and I pray to God for great and good mother. Amen. That's good. Yeah. 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 Like I say, I ain't gonna put you on the spot, but if you want to share a testimony of what God's called you to do, be a good time to do it. I'm not a speaker, and it's not something that I've ever shared publicly. Now, I have with people that have battled anxiety, any of that. I ain't gonna say that. But, uh, What's up with a camera? No, I look like that. Only if I was by myself, I can do that. I was somebody that on the outside, happy. Serve God. Being it. Lived it. Behind a closed door of torment. Torture. What is? All the time. What is? But like I said, outside, nobody was, nobody seen it. <clears throat> but inside, Dying. What if my kids get sick? My daddy. Anxiety. Begged God for two years. Begged him. He'll deliver me. Yeah. Set me free. Yeah. Begged him. Got kind of angry. Two years later, nothing. Yeah. One day. I had a full on in my house in front of people. I don't do that. The only place you'll see me cry, right here. <laughs> Nobody sees that. That's mine. That's my weakness. Nobody needs to see it. But I had a break then. And finally, after years of support, God, what can I do for me? What can I do? I can't. I can't live like this anymore. I serve you. I'm not perfect, but I serve you. All this peace, peace, peace. You read about it. Yeah. I begged for it, but I didn't have it. And I couldn't understand why. But I, even if I need delivered, Lord, send somebody. Yeah. If there's something I'm not saying, send them. I want delivered. Nothing until the day. But what can I do? He said, trust me. And I'm feeling 
No need, McLean. I got offended when he told me to trust him because I thought I did. I thought I did trust God. But the thing is, in life, we always have a choice. Everything in his word, we have to choose whether or not to live in that or just read it. Just quote it. Or are we going to choose it? So after going back and forth for a few minutes with the Lord, because I am that person. There ain't no day. I'm not going to lie about it. I am who I am. My heart broke because for two years I spent so much time not listening. I just wanted him to do what he said he'd do. I was promised peace yeah. if I served him and I had none. Nobody would have known it. If you would have seen me, you would have thought I was a happy go lucky. They know me, they raised me. Nobody really knew it's mine. It was a weakness of mine. And I don't like showing weakness. If we truly trust God, we choose to trust God, that peace that surpasses all understanding is ours. If we choose it, I can set my young I don't even know. I was up here Sunday, we was up here working. Sunday, my young and got up, he stretched, he hit the floor. It's quick. He's right back up. But he, he collapsed. Blocked out. Collapsed. Would have been so easy. He got up. And he was fine. Come 100% normal after that. But so easily, I could have literally here been done. Wrote it off and been done and let the blood ifs take over me to the point. The anxiety I had could have been paralyzing. That's the extent. That I've had before. Paralyzing anxiety. But instead. We got ready. And we came up here. Because I refused. To live in fear. Oh, the spirit of fear. Is not of God. And if it's not of God. I don't want nothing to do with it. When we truly trust God, that peace is ours. But we have to choose it. I know it's not popular. I know mental health. My best friend was in her master's degree in psychology. Mental health. I know. It's not popular. To call it what it is. Demon spirits that will attack our mind and it holds the body of Christ because we don't choose his peace. When I choose to say, God, no matter what, you're my God. You're bigger. No matter what happens. Your bigger is my peace. It belongs to me and I and set it. Amen. No matter what we face, we have to choose what was promised. There's always a choice. The peace. If you stop feeding something, what happens? It dies. And that spirit of fear. It wasn't fed. Amen. It died. And the Holy Spirit inside of me will come against it. Amen. We're human. We'll have moments. I'll have moments of, oh, what in the world? <laughs> what is this? Moments. But then that Holy Spirit rises up. My trust is in God. No matter what it's looking like, Amen. I choose peace. Amen. Amen. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear.
but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He's telling us, he's, he's getting personal with us there. He's saying, my name is God. And I am the Father. He's not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. So I don't accept the fear of God on my family. I don't accept that because we serve too big of a God. They told me when I was 32 year old. I had already preached the Word of God for 12 years. They done bypass surgery on me. They said I was going to die. If I didn't have it done, they'd done it. The doctor came in, I think it was two days later after he'd done it, or the day after, I can't remember. He just flat out looked at me and said, you're going to die. Basically, there's no hope for you. Your heart is gone. There's no... There's, and I was so sick. And I'd been sick for so long. And I went home and I was going to die. I laid on the couch. I said, okay, God. I knew I was ready. And Benita kept aggravating me. Randy, don't you leave me with these five kids. I'll kill you again if you leave me with these five kids. And she wouldn't leave me alone. And I got up and I went hunting one day. And, uh, I had a good talk with the Lord. In them mountains. And I said something along the basis. I said, God, if I'm going to die, let me die preaching your word. Not laying on the couch. And I went and I started, I kept preaching his word. So sick that I, I, I had a heart attack in the pulpit. And I went home and I, after that and I said, God, I'll never do that again because that embarrassed me. That's pride. Well, about two weeks later, I was back in the pulpit. <laughs> I said, if I die, Lord, I want to die working for you, telling people about you. In 2004, they done a, another bypass surgery on me, and they fixed me up pretty good. But then I've had heart attacks after that, and I'd have to stay home. I've been on disabled Social Security for years. And then here a few weeks ago, I, I found myself praying. God, let me help me to go back to work. And I couldn't always stand to sit on the couch and tell the truth. I would be so sick at time and in times and in so much pain, I couldn't hardly stand to sit on the couch. I said, God, I can do this good at work. And I got a job. It walked right in my lap. And I'm working. And I'm still holding on to God. And I love it. And I told myself I wasn't going to testify. Two thousand four. I don't know if it was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, I've had some angioplasties and I've yeah. had some heart attacks, but you ain't dead. But I'm fifty-nine year old, and I'm working five days a week, <laughs> and every day I've worked there for today. Made my fourteenth day of work, and every day I've worked overtime. And I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm tired, man. <laughs> I am worn out. But you know, I've not really, I've not had one sick day. Because when I went and I prayed and I said, God, I want to go back to work, I felt something happen inside me. Because he loves me, Dad. He loves me. And I'm still living. Amen. And I want to live until I die for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. He cares about he cares about what we care about. He loves us personally. 
I mean, tell you, he's, God is, a, is an intimate God. I mean, he wants to know what we're dealing with. And, and, but he gives us authority over so much that we wrestle with. That we do have to choose places. The These promises that are in this don't change. Our circumstances change and how we adapt to those circumstances change. When we make a made up mind, a made up mind will black the devil's eye if it's made up in the Lord, I promise you. Uh, and I believe that God, I, listen, I thank the Lord so much for this, this building and, and this congregation that comes and I was I often think about my dad when he was in the clubs that night and they, they played two sets and he walked outside on his third set and he came back in and he said, he goes over and he unplugs the guitar from his amp and he had that old guitar around his neck and he didn't even put it in the case and he walked out and he just said, there's got to be something more to life than this. And, and daddy's best friend brought him his, his amp and stuff. But daddy went home and the Lord dealt with him. And I think that's the God of the turnaround. That's the Lord right there. Jesus had to, had to put that in his heart and in his mind. And that, and that beer joint that night. And, and where would we be? Where would I be? Where would my sisters be? Where would my son be? If my dad hadn't chose the Lord over sin that night. If he hadn't just taken that leap and walked out, and he wasn't—he didn't—he wasn't born again for two years. He, but he knew there was something more. But God called him. Thank God, and he answered that call in his aunt's kitchen floor, and he never looked back. And he was stubborn, and he was hateful, and he and I didn't know how to have a conversation. And the older I get. And the more the days go on, and the more I creep around in here, the more I understand who he was. And to take this building and black the devil's eye is all I think about, is to take this tabernacle and this body and black the devil's eye. And I, that's why I wanted us so much to give our testimony, because God has created us uniquely. The battles you faced, I haven't faced them. But you know what? When you win that battle, that gives somebody who's facing that battle hope. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, without hope, we perish. Yeah. And so you give them hope that you can defeat that. And Danny stands up and says, man, I drank 30 beers in three hours, and I'm totally clean. And that gives this person hope. And it just bounces around like that. And we can take our weaknesses in God is strong in our weakness, blessed be the name of the Lord. And so if we will just bear ourselves and not try to. The other day I was on God's timetable, and, and I am on God's timetable, thank the Lord. Uh, but I walked out of the door the other day purposefully, and I said, whatever you call me to do today, my time is yours. And, and God, I am just on your clock. And I went to get an oil change, and usually I drop my vehicle off. And I take my Bible with me everywhere I go. I read it if I got five minutes. I love it. I, I just love it. I want this thing to fall apart for reading it so much. I love it. And I went to Walmart to get an oil change. And I went down this aisle. And here was a guy that used to work for me. And we later, and I wasn't even going to go down the aisle. I was going to read my Bible. But I was like, I'm going to look at seat coach. But this was God. I went down that aisle. And he and I talked about the board for 50 minutes. Standing. And I don't know how he had 50 minutes to spare, and I don't know how I had 50 minutes to spare, but there we were. And we were talking about the Lord, and he said something that backs up what you said. And I've said it a lot. You only see what people let you see. You don't know what they're doing. But God does, but you don't. And he was talking about how God, he wants to get closer to the Lord, but everybody's facing a battle, and I agree and I told him in that hour, you choose. Choose you this thing. Make the choice. 
And you got to make that choice to black the devil's eye. Uh, but I crawl up in that attic and I see these homemade black light rigor marauders, daddy bait, and all this stuff, man. I think uh, I can see what he was trying to do. And, and uh, he had to make the choice that night. He, he should have played that third set. But he walked in there and he unplugged that guitar and he walked it out of that beer drum and said, There's got to be more than life than this. And when he made that choice, that affected the generation. And the choice you've made to serve the Lord affects your son and his generation. And not only your son, his son. You know, if the Lord tarries his coming, these kids need to leave the battle long after we're gone. And unless we give them this word to stand on, they won't know what to stand on. This is the only thing right here that is unmovable and unfallible. Yeah. And that is this word that the Bible says is God. It says it was from the very beginning. There is no other God before him. He is beginning and end. And he is in this book right here. And everything we'll ever deal with in our life, there's words of life in this book that will help us handle whatever that situation is. And it don't matter that it's 2022. Sin is sin. The sins we face, the trials we face, the temptations we face, they ain't new. They've been the same forever. <coughs> we choose. But I, listen, October 1st, we're going to have a youth group. And it's going to black the devil's eye. And we might do uh, 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 a hay ride get this we, we can do it on that day or we can do it the next day we might do an outdoor church bonfire singing church service hot cocoa and coffee and hay ride I think that'd be cool I don't know if we're going to put that in but that's going to be good everybody would ride on a hay bale or a trailer but I just want it to be known. I want us to make noise right here. You know what I mean? And these people that live in this creek, man, somehow we got to get them to know that they can come here and worship the Lord. You know, this building's been sitting for a while. The doors have been closed for a while. There's people that don't go to church at all. And I don't know. It ain't about come and join our clique and come and join that. I want to give them Jesus Christ. And that's only Jesus Christ makes an eternal dis difference. The rest of this stuff is just stuff. Right. You know? But uh, who is anybody else? And if not, we'll call. I thank you all. I, I thank you all for showing up. Um, you had ball games? Yeah. Barely made it from east to here. Y'all were riffing. Kelly rolled it. Rolled it. Thank you. I mean, I really do. Thank you. Uh, October 1st, youth group here. October 8th, we're singing at Eflin Stadium. October 15th, Joey and Landon and Robert Hunt are going to preach in the horse ring up in Jesse. Three preachers, one night, the devil is going to get took to the mat. I tell you, he's going to get his kidneys pumped <laughs> on October the 15th. And he's a chump anyway. Absolutely nothing. Can only mess with us with the rope we allow him to use. But I belong to a God who says I can call him Abba. I am adopted. I am a joint heir. I am royalty in the name and blood and the hope of Jesus Christ. An ambassador in bonds. And I represent Christ here. And I represent Christ in the grocery store. And I represent Christ in Walmart. And I better get that in my mind and in my heart. I don't get time off when I'm around bad people i still have to represent and, and those bad people are dying for me to represent 
those bad people are hungry. Yeah. You know, and they'll put you down and talk junk to you and tell you dirty jokes. And that's the devil. That ain't them. That's the devil manipulating them. But inside, they're really dying for you to go home. Yep. I, I don't want that. It's inside, they're dying for you to go home. Stop right there. Yeah, I'm check this. And walk around the corner and make something for me. I know. I've seen you in my day. Be a lot. Amen. Be a lot in darkness. This, this church is going to be a bright city on a hill, but it's going to be a bright city on a hill because of, of this congregation that's coming and we get our mind on the Lord and we let God be God and we put Him first. And I promise you, if we're willing to share our weaknesses and let Him be made strong, then other people can see that and they can get strong. That's just the way it works. Um, I hope Joey and them have the altar lined up over at this thing. I was going to say, as we all, like I said, don't need to we pray for it to be a big, huge move. God's going to move. There's, there's move taking place. Amen. And it's, it starts here. Yeah, no the revival starts right here. And the move starts right here. Oh, yeah. And Joey's going to preach a revival. 27, 28, 29. Right here. Did y'all know that? Right here. You know that. Right here. Joey Massey. Facebook, Joey Massey's going to be preaching a revival right here. 27, 28, 29. This month. This month. Thursday, Yep. Yep. And Landon Kennedy's going to be singing. Unless that coal mine keeps him in there over some nonsense, the power going out or something. He'll be singing 27, 28, and 29. And the devil will get a black eye right here. Restore the broken, be here. Restore the broken, be here, play. Listen, we do need to practice. I'd love to play with you, man. Hey, Christy Blankenship wanted to. Everybody to remember her first. She wanted to be here. She's sick. Listen, Christy, and what's that other lady's name? Heather. They both messaged me. Listen, they love yeah. being here. They're going to they're gonna come back. Yeah. And they just want to mention them that uh, fall hay ride kind of thing. But I think. It's awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. Well, let's do it. Listen, man. Look. Listen, listen I, I want us to do all kinds of stuff. But listen, again, I can't. I need people to pull it together. I need people's like, yeah, let's do it. Like me to say a fall festival? I, what does that even mean? I don't know. Hey, Rod, right, I'm talking. Hey, Rod, right, I'm talking. I'm all about it. And the big sign says Jesus on somewhere. But thank y'all for coming. And if everybody's been obedient, we'll say prayer. Pat, I'll go ahead and uh, speak, of course. And I told Tally before we went to the ball game, I'm like, we got to hurry. She said, what? And I said, well, hopefully Mountain View will be there early. I said, we got to hurry so we can get back for church. She said, oh, okay, so we're going to church too? And I said, yes. I said, I got to go. There's something. I said, God just told me I got to go. She said, okay, let's do this then. And we did. Like, we usually don't. When it's high school varsity and stuff, we usually don't get out of the game until like 9.30. Then another hour we're getting home. And we ended up, uh, about 8 o'clock, people was talking to us though, and, they, and I can talk and talk about shoeboxes. So that was one reason I was held up because we are having, we prayed, and just to give everybody a little thing of God works, we prayed for a full circle speaker. And what that is is someone as a child that received a box that comes to know Christ and then gives back in return. They start fixing boxes and they give and they go out and tell how that simple gift changed their life. Well, one of them mentioned in one of our very first meetings, let's pray that we get somebody from Ukraine because of the war in Ukraine. Wouldn't that be so awesome? It got denied like two or three times. And I'm like, okay, tonight, you know, is our paperwork not correct? What What are we doing that's that this is not happening? It got rejected again. And I'm like, okay, we're a new team. Maybe that's it. And the holdup was actually funny 
but it had um, Mary Dameron doing a prayer. Yeah. They said, no, absolutely not. Mary Dameron is battling cancer and she's not speaking and she is not to be bothered. This can't happen. Well, it came by a friend of mine's desk, someone that I've known through shoeboxes for about, I guess he's been there maybe 15 years. I don't know how long exactly. And he said, oh, said you all don't, said Alicia Brown, that's Muffy. That's Mary's daughter. If, if Muffy says she'll pray, she'll pray. This is okay. But the thing was, that goes on his desk on like a Thursday. That Tuesday, a full circle speaker volunteered, signed up, and guess where they are from? Ukraine. Ukraine. It was all in God's timing. It's exactly what we had asked for, what someone had prayed for. And I said, you know, that's amazing. So I've been telling everybody, you know, just that little story, how even though we thought we were hitting black wall, you know, walls, it was all in God's timing and in his steps. And to get on about the shoeboxes, I'm coming here to say, ouch. I kind of feel like a nanny right now. You know, if you confess your <coughs> sins and just put them out there. I've watched these kids, and I love watching kids. My heart and my passion is with kids. My gifts and calling are with kids. It has been my whole life. Andrea was one of my youth babies, you know, and now here she is, and she's got kids that's grown. And I've had different kids now that are in their, you know, mid-20s and early 30s and stuff that have reached out how they talked about love outreach that we had here and how we had we ended up it like spread we had three like it even went into mcdowell county in different places and our love outreach was a little bit different because we not only did that we fed these kids because we knew these kids were hungry and god made the way that we could clothe these kids because maybe they didn't have shoes to go to school i lived in I'm not saying it was a shack, but my first little home was pretty rough. It was like a little 10 by 48 and floors falling in, ceiling falling in. And you see the uh, the insulation even sticking through the walls. And one of them kids told me I lived in a mansion. Yeah. He came and stayed and I still had my old ball shoes. And he said, he said something. He loved him and I give him to him. And he said, Wow, I've never had a pair of shoes like this. And they were three sizes too big, but he wore them every day. He wore them to school faithfully. It is important that we let them speak. It is important that they have a voice because God has already placed in their hearts, their gifts, their callings, and it will be brought to life. And we can be someone's no. And we can stop that for a moment. We can put that stumbling block in these children's lives because now I look, I missed a generation of youth that I didn't teach, that I haven't been teaching. And God called me to that. And they're not without repentance. And I get this little fire every time, you know, you all talk about youth groups and youth groups. And we had talked before about youth. That's one thing. And the van is still sitting there. And, you know, we've talked about this holler from one end to the other. And me and Candace had even talked like last November about youth and how it was so powerful. So we, I just want to say, let them speak. I have kids that nowadays that have sent messages. Some of them are preachers. You know, some of them are doctors, lawyers. They have families. They're mothers. They're coaches. They're you know, they're just everyday jobs, but they'll say some of the best times of their life was youth, was youth group, that something then changed them. I've had people that live in North Carolina now that said, man, if y'all ever do vacation Bible school, we're coming in and staying. I want my kids to have what we have growing up. So the youth is important. Ouch to me. That puts a hunger in me. I love it. And they were the reason I'm here because little hallelujahs, yeah. 
was confirmation. Little hallelujah was confirmation to me. I enjoyed it. Did you know that? Do you know about the four things? Yes. They told us to use that. Yes. 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 Place in 2023. Yes. Yes. Feel that box. There's a bull run. We're going to feel it. Never done, but I'm going to do it. Good. Uh, oh, the van, uh, I put a battery in it, and it turned over. It was, she got a brand new transmission. Well, not a little bit, the, it's yeah, the transmission tool looked great. 200 miles on it at the most. We checked, we checked everything. It looks good. The gas is dead is what's wrong with it, and the field quick. I busted a glass on it. That's okay. It's a piece of glass. We're going to fix that in a few minutes. We're going to make that thing the awesomest, craziest, wildest, I bust the back glass there. Listen, you had you had guys what mechanics out there. At least we was trying. Yeah, uh, hey, for effort, God had the increase. It's gonna run. It's gonna run. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I love the youth. Little hallelujah. That's why we had to stop. That's good. Here, get up. Get up with Candace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's close, can we? Yeah. Already, uh, Dear Lord, we come before you. We thank you again for your presence, your grace, and your kindness, Lord. You've been shown here tonight. We thank you for, for all the good mercies that have been bestowed, all the stories that's been told. But we ask you to let us take these into our hearts and into our minds, take them home, dwell on them, and think, Lord, of how to help us. But we, had, we just thank you, Lord, for the words that was given, the songs that was sung. Well, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, be with each and every one here as they're on their way home. Keep us safe to a point of return. I love you and I thank you, Lord, for all you've done in my life. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.